we'll get as close as we can here. And uh, I realize we're going to sit on some dirt, but we've been doing that now for months and months and months. We'll get everybody settled in and try to talk nice and loud. So over that Minneapolis Moline that's uh, turning over there. Well, listen, Marines, uh, Sergeant Major Kent and I want to wish you Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Marines. We've been traveling around uh, Afghanistan, I think it seems like for quite a while now, been about the last three and a half, four days. Uh, and we came out for one reason and one reason only. We want to look you on the eye. We want to try to see every Marine that, uh, and when I say Marines, by the way, I'm talking about our corpsmen. Uh, thanks for being in Afghanistan when you could be home with your with your family. A bunch of you are married, a bunch of you are single, it doesn't matter, we've all got family. So, uh, I made a lot of points with my wife as I patted her on the fanny as I was walking out the door and I said, Honey, uh, you've been a good woman for 40 years. I'm going to Afghanistan with Sergeant Major Kent. 10 o'clock at night in the freezing cold. Uh, we, we were about, I don't know, 2,000 of them last night, all the way south at Garmser. And uh, at 10 o'clock at night, it was just colder than hell. And uh, we were looking at Marines, wishing them Merry Christmas and telling them thanks. Let me give you a sense for, uh, but before I do this, I, I've got a message. On We left on Monday night, Holly, and she said, the President of the United States, I'm not making this up. Hands me the phone. And the other end is Jim. He stand at attention, rock hard. And uh, he said, I just wanted to call you and wish you Merry Christmas. Now he was calling all the service chiefs. Will you tell your Marines, thank you. Thank you for serving. Thank you for being in Afghanistan at Christmas. Thank you for your sacrifices. Thank you for being the Marines that you are. And then he said, do me one other favor. Will you tell your Marines that the, their commander in chief said Merry Christmas? Well, I gotta tell you, it was, uh, it was almost, I mean, it was one of those moments that the most, uh, most powerful man on the face of the earth talking to the Commandant of the Marine Corps, and it's one of those things I'll never forget. And I said, Mr. President, you can, <clears throat> I didn't say you can take it to the bank, but that's what I meant. And I said, sir, I'm going to tell every Marine I see that you said thank you and that you wish them a Merry Christmas. So from our Commander-in-Chief, Merry Christmas, Marines. The, uh, I want to kind of put what you're doing in perspective, because I think it's important. It's easy. It's easier sometimes for Marines like Sergeant Major Kent and I to come in to the theater. We kind of come in and out. Last year I landed uh, in, a, in a B-22 at Christmas, a day before Christmas in Golestan. And instead of running into the combat outpost where the platoon commander was and, and his 85 Marines, villagers came up, met me, shook my hand. We talked for a while. And then we moseyed on in and took a brief on where things were going. And so they brought the turkeys. I've watched Nowzad change from what well, just an absolutely dangerous place to where it is today. That's in your zone. We walked through the streets of Marja yesterday. And yet on February, middle of February of this year, two Afghan Kandak battalions and two Marine infantry battalions supported by all our combined arms and the way we do business in the Marine Corps ended up attacking and uh, in the Marja. We went all summer long and people were saying, I think maybe Marja is too tough for the Marines. Maybe the Marines got in over their heads. Maybe this is one of those places that just can't turn. And most of you got here, you know, after the summer. You know what I'm talking about. You saw it on the news. We would say, tell them that we said Merry Christmas and we said thank you for supporting you as you came over here to spend Christmas with your brothers and sisters and allowing Sergeant Major Kent and I to be here with you. Don't forget where you fit. 
don't forget that two years from now, you're going to look back and uh, you're going to feel really good about what you've done.